The water is subtle and soft. It looks like water, but when you reach out to touch it, it feels as if nothing were there. It feels like water, but it is so fun that you can't grab a hold of it. It is like there's nothing there, but still it is there. It is just that subtle. Wonderful means ineffable. There is no way you can even think about it. The water is also fragrant. Once you get in it, you won't want to get out. As soon as you smell its fragrance, you will bring forth the body mind. In this world, we chase after good smells, but in the land of ultimate bliss, the fragrances cause one to say, "Too fine. I did better hurry up and cultivate the way." The smells of this world cause you to think, "Not bad." It is really bitter at the temple. Cultivation isn't as good as, but smells are defied dramas. Forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and tangible objects are the five sense objects, and cultivators of the way must certainly see through and break all attachment to them. First of all, do not become attached to a beautiful form. Beauty is one is always deep, deep beneath the skin. There is just pus, blood, and flesh. In the Suragama Sutra, we read of. Mantaji's daughter, who couldn't give up her love for Ananda, the Buddha asked her, "What is it about Ananda that you love?" "I love his eyes," she said. "All right," said the Buddha. "I will pluck out his eyes, and you may have them." "Oh no," she said. "If you do that, they won't be of any use. If they are of no use, then what are you doing loving them?" asked Shakyamuni Buddha. Hearing this. She immediately certified to the fruit of a hardship. So you should not become attached to forms. In order to cultivate, you should borrow forms and sounds, and yet not become attached to them. Don't say, "Ah, this music is so beautiful." When I hear it, I get all confused and don't know what I am doing. If you must sing, sing in praise of Amitabha Buddha. Don't become attached to smells either. When I was in Hong Kong, people used to follow me around. They said I smelled good. I really disliked this, and so I put some smelly stuff on myself to keep them away. Everything is made from the mind alone. If you have some magic power, then fragrances aren't fragrant, and bad smells don't stink. Good sounds aren't good sounds, and bad sounds aren't bad. Beauty isn't beautiful, and ugliness isn't ugly. Somebody power is a skill one derives from cultivation. If you have this skill, when people are good to you, you are not happy, and when they are bad, you don't become afflicted. With somebody power, you won't listen to the talk of your tongue when it says to you, "Take a taste of this and see if it tastes better than." I often tell you that when I eat, I don't know if the food is good or not. It is not that I don't know. If I didn't know, I would be like wood or stone. I am just not afflicted by the taste. I eat the same amount, whether it tastes good or not, without discrimination. In the same way, greed for the objects of touch indicates a lack of somebody power and shows that one has been turned by external states. The lotuses of four colors in the land of ultimate bliss shine with four colors of light, which represent the four applications of mindfulness, the four right efforts, and the four bases of supernatural power. In reciting and studying the Amitabha Sutra, we should cultivate samadhi power. If you have samadhi power, then the land of ultimate bliss is right here. If you don't, even if you went to the land of ultimate bliss, you would run right off to the land of ultimate misery. With samadhi power, the land of ultimate misery is the land of ultimate bliss. Without affliction, you can say everything is okay. If that is not the land of ultimate bliss, what is? Sutra. Moreover, Shariputra, in that Buddha land, there is always heavenly music, and the ground is yellow gold. In the six 
periods of the day and night, a heavenly rain of mandarava flowers falls, and throughout the clear morning, each living being of that land, with sacks full of the myriads of wonderful flowers, makes offerings to the hundreds of thousands of millions of Buddhas of the other directions. At meal time, they return to their own country, and having eaten, they show around. Shariputra, the realization of the land of ultimate bliss is thus meritoriously adorned. Commentary, Shakyamuni Buddha told Shariputra, "In Amitabha's country, the gods play music all day and night, and all night, throughout the six periods: the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, the end of the day, the beginning of the night, the middle of the night, and the end of the night." Mandarava, a Sanskrit word, may be interpreted as "according to your wish," a white flower. However, you would like them to be. That's the way these flowers are. At dawn, when the sun is just rising, the living beings of this land, with sacks full of the myriads of wonderful flowers, make offering to the hundreds of thousands of millions of Buddhas of the other directions. How long does it take? Not long. Just the time it takes to eat a meal, half or an, an half an hour or so, these living beings can travel to billions of Buddha lands in a very short space of time, because they have obtained the eight great freedoms of the self. They are free and independent, and everything occurs with their wishes. Having obtained the astral spiritual penetrations, if they want to go somewhere, they arrive there immediately. When we bow to the Buddha, we should envision our bodies filling the limitless Buddha lands of the ten directions. Personally, bowing to all the Buddhas. If you can contemplate the Dharma realm in this way, then your body is as big as the Dharma realm. The Avatamsaka Sutra says, if one wishes to understand completely the Buddhas of the three periods of time, you should contemplate the nature of the Dharma realm. Everything is made from the mind alone. At meal time, they return to the land of ultimate bliss, and having eaten, they go for a walk. Sutra. Moreover, Shariputra in this country, there are always rare and wonderful, very colored birds, white geese, peacocks, parrots, egret, kalavinkas, two-headed birds. In the six periods of the day and night. The flocks of birds sing forth harmonious and elegant sounds. Their clear and joyful sounds proclaim the five truths, the five powers, the seven body shares, the eight sacred way shares, and drama such as these. When living beings of this land hear these sounds, they are all together mindful of the Buddha, mindful of the drama, and mindful of the sangha. Commentary. Since Shariputra still had no questions, Shakyamuni Buddha said, "I will tell you a little more, Shariputra. In the land of ultimate bliss, there are many kinds of multicolored birds. They are not un most unusual and beautiful. White geese are found in our world too. Peacocks are especially beautiful. Parrots can talk. They may see you and say hello from Chinese parrots." Say a guest is coming. A guest is some is coming. Some people even teach their parents to recite the Buddha's name so that they can be born in the land of ultimate bliss. Egress, another kind of bird after which Shariputra's mother was named. They are also very beautiful. Kalavinka is a Sanskrit word, which means good sounding bird. Before it has even hatched from its egg. It sings more melodiously than any other bird. Two-headed birds have two heads on one body. Have you ever seen such a bird? Living beings are born in this way as karmic retribution for too much sexual activity. Because the husband's and wife's sexual desire is so heavy that they indulged in intercourse day and night, they fell and turned into a bird body. With two heads, they have different consciousness for the same karmic retribution. 
So be careful if your sexual desire is too intense, you may become a two-headed bird. Someone says, I did like very much to become one of those birds. People would watch over me and feed me and take care of me, perhaps. But the birds are animals just the same, and when their lives are over, they fall into their house. It is dangerous. Don't think that being a bird is a lot of fun, even though they can fly when they want to fly and perch when they want to perch. A bird's retribution is incredible. Its wisdom decreases life after life, but if you have wisdom, you won't fall. In the six periods of day and night, these birds sing forth the harmonious and elegant sounds, like a choral, very fine music. The birds in the land of ultimate bliss are not born as a result of their comic offenses. They are manifestations of Amitabha, Bu- Amitabha Buddha's merit and virtue. In the land of ultimate bliss, the three evil ways of rebirth do not exist. If there are no animals, you may ask, then where did all the birds come from? They are manifestations of Amitabha Buddha's merit and virtue, and their songs are drama sounds which help him speak the drama. They are clear and joyful sounds, sound good to everyone. Everyone who hears them becomes happy because the sounds penetrate right into the heart. What is heard in the clear and joyful sounds? The sounds of the birds are the sounds of drama. The five rules, the root of faith, the root of vigor, the root of mindfulness, the root of samadhi, the root of wisdom. The five rules germinate body seeds and cause your body heart to grow until it fully matures into the five powers. The power of faith, the power of vigor, the power of mindfulness, the power of samadhi, the power of wisdom. The seven body shares, also called the seven limbs of enlightenment, are selecting a dharma, vigorously cultivating it, joy derived from cultivation, casting out cause delusions, renouncing subtle delusions, samadhi, mindfulness. These seven are very important and all Buddhist disciples should know them. The Eight Sacred Way Shares, also known as the Proper Eightfold Path, um, Proper Views. This refers to your manner of regarding something, your mental outlook and your opinions, not to what you view with your eyes. You practice the non outflow conduct in contemplating yourself. Your own views and understanding must be proper, but you may also explain proper views as the view you see with your eyes. That is, you may view what is proper, but not what is improper. Improper means deviant, as when people see something that causes them to give rise to deviant thoughts. The view is one's vision of external manifestations. For example, if a bishop sees an improper person, he should not continue to look at him. If he looks, that is called an improper view. The Sramanara precepts say, don't sing or dance, use popular instruments, or tend or listen to such events. Improper thoughts are also improper views. But if you can see without seeing, although it is improper, you don't think of it as such. You may then be said to have proper views. Proper thought. Internally, where people cannot see, you use non outflow wisdom. It is most important to be without outflows. I have explained this many times, but it seems that the more I explain it, the more outflows you have. Outflows flow out. You have a tiny bit of the water of wisdom, but you let it flow right out and use instead the fire of ignorance. There is nothing more wonderful in heaven and earth than the drama draw of no outflows, and yet you still take no notice of it. Even if Shakyamuni Buddha himself appeared, if you had outflows, he couldn't take you across. To be without outflows, You must be free from improper knowledge, be without improper views, and have no sexual desire. If you have sexual desire, you have outflows. With no sexual desire, 
you have no outflows. Just this is a proper thought. If you have design, you have outflows. If you have no design, you have no outflows. Proper thought belongs to the mind. Do not give rise to evil thoughts in the mind. Proper speech. With proper speech, what you say is not the slightest bit off color. Your speech is completely correct. If someone speaks improperly to you, you should think of it as proper. This is pure mouth karma. Worldly men are of many kinds, and when they speak improperly, do not criticize them, saying, "Ah, he is speaking incorrectly." On the other hand, be careful not to get too close to such people either. Proper thought is pure mind karma, and proper speech is pure mouth karma. Proper action. Proper action refers to pure bodily karma. Use non-outflow wisdom to discard improper bodily karma, specifically sexual desires. I can't make it too clear. I can't say it too frankly. Many people say, "Oh well, emptiness is form, and form is emptiness," and they casually play around. This is improper action. When you use non-outflow wisdom, your behavior is never improper. People with improper wisdom are not intelligent enough to behave properly, but they can do evil things. Things involving men and women, miraculously well, better than anyone else. Proper action is purity of the body. Proper action, proper speech, proper thought mean purity of the commas of body, mouth, and mind. Proper livelihood. Proper livelihood refers to any livelihood which does not fall within the five kinds of improper livelihood. Manifesting a strange star. Look at me, says the great vehicle monk, dressed in small vehicle robes. I am special. You should make offerings to me. He is special, say the blind followers. He is probably a Buddha or a Bodhisattva, taking the gaudy rag for a treasure. Speaking of your own merit and virtue, do you know me? I have done so many good deeds. I put a whole lot of money into building that bridge over there, and people walk back and forth on it because of my merit and virtue. I built a home for the aged and a school, and I established scholarships as well. I built a temple where I support several hundred drama masters, and I am acting as their drama protector. The merit and virtue is mine, all mine. They can get away with telling such stories to stupid people, but people with wisdom don't even have to hear what they are saying. They can tell by looking at them that they are just telling stories. Fortune telling. People consult an oracle. You should give me a million dollars, he says, and do good deeds. If you don't, you will die tomorrow. A million dollars isn't too much to pay for my life. The victim thinks, and so he gives. And the next day he doesn't die. Of course he wouldn't have anyway, but still he believes that he might have. Tomorrow, says the fortune teller, a very lucky thing will happen if you do a good deed today. Give fifty pounds of gold today, and tomorrow you will get five hundred. Ten to one. It's not a bad ratio. The man says, handling,、uh, handing him fifty pounds of gold. But the next day there is no gold, and he can't find the fortune teller either. And I thought I did meet an immortal. He says, shouting and bragging. When it isn't necessary, why shout? A certain drama master used to startle people by bellowing at them. People were impressed, even though they had no idea what he was saying. His voice was very resonant. But what is the point of yelling with many people present? He, you can speak a little louder. Otherwise, you shouldn't yell. Why does Why does a drama master shout? He doesn't know that it is one of the five improper means of livelihood. Speaking of your offerings, I had the best lunch. At layman so and so's house, he says, reciting the lunch mantra. I had white fungus mushrooms. Another layman hears the mantra, and can't take it. 
I did better borrow a hundred dollars and offer some vegetables to the drama master. He doesn't know that the drama master has transgressed the boundaries of proper livelihood by reciting the lunch mantra to move the layman's mind and obtain good offerings. Proper vigor. This means bowing to the Buddha, reciting the to the reciting the Buddha's name from morning to night without resting. Strangely enough, if you go to chat with someone, the more you chat, the more energy you have. Talking, talking, too much talking. But of what use is all your vigorous talking? It is improper vigor. It is improper vigor. Proper vigor means doing that which is beneficial. Improper vigor involves doing that. Which is not beneficial, such as being lazy with respect to the Buddha Dharma, but chatting more vigorously than anyone else. A person with proper vigor comes to listen to the sutras when they are being lectured, no matter how busy he is. One with improper vigor doesn't come, even though he has nothing else to do. Going to the movies, going sightseeing. Going everywhere but to the temple to listen to sutras is called improper vigor. Hunting for the best place to go gambling is also improper vigor. Proper samadhi, samadhi, a Sanskrit word, means right reception or right concentration. Use none of low wisdom to cultivate samadhi, and no improper states will move you. If you could remember even one sentence of the sutras I have explained to you, then when the time comes, you could use it. But you forget, and so you meet the state, are turned by it, and run after it. This is because you have no proper concentration, no proper samadhi. I know, I know. You say, I know. I don't have the proper proper samadhi. If you know you don't have it. Then why don't you find a way to obtain it? Pupil, if you tell them that they have made a mistake, they say, "I know, I know." If they know, why do they make such mistakes? Proper mindfulness. Be mindful of non-outflow wisdom. Do not have outflows, no matter what. Don't indulge in the slightest sexual desire. Having no sexual desire is proper mindfulness. Any thoughts of sexual desire is improper mindfulness. Someone once said, "That person is attracted to me. I can tell by the look in his eyes." If you didn't have sexual desire yourself, you wouldn't be looking into his eyes in the first place. Just what kind of thoughts are you having when you look into his eyes? If you didn't have sexual desire, you wouldn't know that he did. If you were clear, clear, pure, pure, spotless, and undefined, you would how would you detect his desire? Speak up. If you know that others have desire, then you have it too. And not having cut it off, your mindfulness is improper. You may explain these eight sexually well shares any way you wish, as long as it is with principle. However, you can't just open your mouth and not know what to say. In explaining the drama, you must speak correctly, and not deviate from the principle in the least bit. In drama such as this, refers to the four applications of mindfulness: the five rules, the five powers, the seven body shares, the eight sagely way shares, the four right efforts, and the four bases of supernatural power. Thirty-seven in all, the thirty-seven wings of enlightenment. The four right efforts are putting an end to evil which already exists, preventing evil not yet arising from arising, bringing goodness which does not yet exist into existence, developing the good which already exists. The four bases of supernatural power are zeal, vigor, mindfulness, thought. Sutra, Shariputra, do not say that these birds are born as retribution of for their karmic offenses. For what reason? In this Buddha land, there are no three evil ways of rebirth. Shariputra, in this Buddha land, not even the names of the three evil ways exist. 
how much the less they are actuality, desiring that the Dharma sound be widely proclaimed, Amitabha Buddha, by transformation, made this multitude of birds. Commentary Do not say that these birds came from one of the three evil realms. Why, in the land of ultimate bliss, they are not even the names of the house, the realm of animals, or the realm of the hungry ghosts? How much the less could such creatures actually exist? Then where did the birds come from? Wishing to spread the drama sound far and wide, with his vow power, Amitabha created the Kalavinkas and all the other birds to help him. They come from his spiritual penetrations and transformations, not from the three evil paths, unlike the birds in this world which are born in the realms of animals. They are transformations of Amitabha Buddha's drama power. Sutra, Shariputra, in that Buddha land, when the soft wind blows, the rows of jeweled trees and jeweled nets give forth a subtle and wonderful sounds, like 100,000 kinds of music played at the same time. All those who hear these sounds naturally bring forth in their hearts mindfulness of the Buddha, mindfulness of the drama, and mindfulness of the Sangha. Shariputra, the realization of the land of ultimate bliss, is thus meritoriously adorned. Commentary Shariputra, said Shakyamuni Buddha, I tell you how it is in the land of ultimate bliss. The gentle breezes blow through small bells hanging from the seven layers of netting on the seven rows of trees. Their sound helps us recollect the Buddha. The drama and the song are and is like a hundred thousand kinds of subtle music playing harmoniously all at once. Those who hear these sounds have no divine thoughts, but instead naturally recite Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Dharma, Namo Amitabha Sangha. You ask, Namo Amitabha Buddha, perhaps, but how can they recite Namo Amitabha Dharma? Is the Dharma which Amitabha Buddha taught? How can you not say Namo Amitabha Dharma? This is also the Sangha which Amitabha Buddha touched and transformed. So how can you not say Namo Amitabha Sangha? Don't be so unimaginative. My explanation is a new explanation for an old meaning, just like my explanation of Nirvana. Ni means not produced and Vana means not destroyed. What is not produced? Sexual desire. What is not destroyed? Wisdom. In the realm of Nirvana, the Buddha has no sexual desire. He is clear, pure, and undefined. He is without improper thoughts of desire. His self-nature constantly gives rise to wisdom which is never destroyed. 